Mrs. Sackman, an internationally recognized authority on nutrition and non-toxic, biologically sound cancer therapies, has worked for over 25 years guiding thousands of individuals in their quest to achieve and maintain vibrant good health. Her focus is always on correcting the cause of a problem by strengthening the body's natural healing systems, enhancing host resistance, the key to cancer prevention. She will help sort through the confusion of nutritional and therapeutic concepts. The information presented here is unique. While the concepts are indeed revolutionary, it is the belief of many that these ideas will become the basis of standard practice in the future. So please give a warm welcome to Ruth Sackman. Uh, this is the first in a series of programs in which we hope to bring you information that you don't find uh, in the media as a rule. Uh, it's information that should be helpful for you to uh, improve your health, maintain good health, and we hope that you're going to enjoy the program. Uh, my guest today is Dr. John Lee. Let me give you some information about him. He's uh, Harvard, class of 51, graduated the medical school, the University of Minnesota in 1955, did his internship at Minneapolis General Hospital. Uh, he practiced in Mill Valley, family practice in Mill Valley. Uh, and now he's teaching a class of optimum health, health at the College of Marin since 1976 for 21 years. Right. And talking with him earlier, he told me that uh, the enrollment in his class was so high uh, that they couldn't uh, accommodate all of the students. Teaches a class in nutrition, by the way. Now, this is the important thing. Uh, he's the author of a number of books. I have one of them here. All right. This is, uh, let me read the uh, other books. His first book was Optimal Health Guidelines, Natural Progesterone, and that's this book. Now, um, and what your doctor may not tell you about menopause, and that's this book, the latest book. Uh, Dr. Lee, it's... Really, I'm delighted to see you here, and certainly coming here all the way from California. It's, it's quite a thing for you to do. Well, thank you. I consider it quite an honor to be asked uh, on your first program. Yes. Show. All right. I think what you've done is uh, probably something that the, uh, that the health movement needed desperately. Some of us weren't aware of the problem, actually, until you presented it. And I know you presented it very early, in about 1987, mm -hmm. 84, 5, 6, or 7, mm -hmm. something that today we're beginning to take for granted. And there's some work that's being done which is showing that you were right then and it's validating your work. Would you tell the audience about it? <laughs> All right. I, uh, at the time... I didn't think I was doing anything revolutionary. <laughs> no. uh, I was in family practice in Mill Valley for 20-some years, and um, uh, as happens when you're in practice, your 40-year-old patients become 60 years old. You haven't changed, but suddenly your patients are 20 years old. And um, in my practice, which was family practice, I had many patients who uh, were having trouble with osteoporosis. And uh, in that time, around 1978, uh, in our community, we had a laboratory that could do bone mineral density tests. So there was no doubt that the people had osteoporosis. The big problem was, in 1978, we had discovered that estrogen, which was the therapy of choice for yes. osteoporosis, uh, was uh, in real trouble because it was found that it was the cause of the uh, large rise of cancer of the uterus. That's right. Six to eight times more cases in people who use estrogen. So it was a cruel dilemma. If we were use the estrogen for their bones, we put them at risk of cancer. And if we didn't use it, then we put them at risk of a hip fracture and they end up in nursing home. So uh, I must admit that um, uh, this was a, a problem which I didn't see an easy uh, resolution for. And when I talked to my colleagues in the medical practice, uh, uh, my, the only uh, suggestion was that I should let the patient decide. 
Let them take the risk. Remember that? And uh, that wasn't the way of resolving the problem. It was just getting you off the hook. Uh, so you wouldn't be sued. Right. Let them take the risk. But at that time, I happened to hear a talk by uh, Ray Peet, biochemist, uh, PhD, uh, who's uh, very knowledgeable about progesterone. I think it was... Uh, uh, the uh, focus of his PhD thesis in the earlier years. And he was challenging the doctors, saying, why is it at menopause when the production of both estrogen and progesterone fall, why are doctors only giving one hormone back? What can possibly be the uh, rationale in that? And I began to think that uh, he had something, and I met with Dr. Pete, and I looked up his references and found that uh, all was well, that everything he said fit with the references. And then I applied that idea to the patients of mine who had osteoporosis and couldn't take estrogen. If at menopause, osteoporosis accelerates, why are we giving only estrogen? Maybe progesterone has a part. To balance. Since it's a perfectly safe hormone, and since it was being um, sold in health food stores and through doctors and uh, as a um, uh, skin moisturizer, and had been out for years, and it uh, provided enough progesterone to give a normal physiological level, um, I thought, why not try it for my patients with osteoporosis? And that's how it got started. Uh, it turns out in three years of bone testing, uh, bone mineral testing, we found that uh, uh, the bone minerals uh, uh, density rose about 15.5% in about three years on the average. Uh, different patients did different. And then I started uh, using it in the patients who also could take estrogen thinking that since it's good in the patients who aren't taking estrogen, maybe on those who are taking estrogen will work even better. What I, and that's, this is when I started learning about progesterone. It isn't what I learned in books. It isn't what I learned in medical school. It isn't what I learned in the medical journals at the time. It was what I was learning from the patients. Here they were applying a small dose of a natural hormone. Their bones were getting better. First thing I learned was that the estrogen they were on was far too much. They had to reduce their estrogen or they'd get estrogen side effects. So then I evolved the idea of estrogen dominance, that estrogen dominance increases risk of cancer, and it causes water retention and a whole host of symptoms, and I lay, put them all together in umbrella of estrogen dominance. All right, I'm going, so going to, to stop. We're All going right. to stop for a moment, but we will be right back. <laughs>